you can set it on like a figure eight pattern, you can set it on a big circle pattern, or you can set it on a semicircle. The warmest sound for spring, so we have it set on a figure eight right now. Mm, and okay. it used to be about four feet away from me. So okay. I'm really using it. Yeah. So I think for wow, spring, that's kind of the piano, like, Just FYI. Okay. And then we'll start here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was me. We should.
Good morning and welcome to St. Ignatius Church. For those of you that are with us in person, I encourage you to continue to refrain from singing or speaking, but we are getting close to being able to do that together. So we ask that you continue to remain masked at all times while you're here in the church with us. For those of you joining us via our live stream, if you've not done so already, you can download the worship aid on our homepage or the link in the chat box. So. Wherever you are, and those of you that are here, please rise and join with me in Here at This Table. Drink for 
Good morning, dear friends. How wonderful to see the church filling up a bit more as time goes by. Let's begin now making the gesture of our faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Well, in this wonderful festival of the holy body and blood of Christ our Lord, we gather with all people of faith, Christian people, and especially people in the Catholic community who are so in love with the Eucharist and who are so fed by the Eucharist in their lives. So if it's all right with you, may I invite you to just look around and maybe uh, with a wave or a smile, just, just uh, acknowledge the other people around here. Yes, and you folks at home, please do the same. <laughs> Thank you. Won't you be seated, please? Let's just get comfortable. Just make sure you're comfortable and just begin to uh, center into what we are doing. You can start breathing more deeply if you wish. <laughs> at, least, at least breathing, but if you want to breathe more deeply, that's good too. Uh, breathing in very deeply. Breathing out fully. And we get in touch with whatever is going on inside of us these days. What do we bring here to this sacred liturgy? Where do we want the touch of God's healing and love to be strong? You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to nourish us with your body and blood, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and lead us to life which is everlasting. And we would like to invite the children at home with their families to uh, uh, join in with the Liturgy of the Word for the children. And uh, then, shall we stand for, for the Gloria? to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your Glory 
us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experiencing in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. Who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Won't you be seated, please? Now, just a couple of words here to get a context for this first reading of Exodus. Body and blood of the Lord, and this one's going to be emphasizing the blood of the sacrificial animals. So, as you recall, in the last for the last six weeks of Easter, we've been going around with the holy water, reminding us of our baptism. Nice gesture, simple water is clean and nice, even whimsical. Use your imagination now and imagine you are in this group of the Israelite people, and Moses is going around with a bowl of blood. And he's really sprinkling the people to show how important and irrevocable the covenant is with God. So if, if you can do it, it's, the blood is pretty noxious, so see what you think. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How can I repay the Lord? for 
And am I the son of your handmaid? You have loosened my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Of thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and the more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of heifers' ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciousness from dead works to the worship of the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. food 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the mountain of olives. The gospel, the saving good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I have a story for you from uh, Leo uh, Tolstoy. (laughs) Why did I block on that? Leo Tolstoy. It is a very well-known story about the three hermits. A bishop and several pilgrims are traveling on a fishing boat in the lake district of northern Russia. During the voyage, the bishop overhears a discussion about a remote island nearby their course where three old hermits live a Spartan existence focused on seeking salvation of their souls. The bishop is intrigued, and then he informs the captain that he wishes to visit the island. The captain seeks to dissuade him by saying, the old men are not worth your pains. I have heard say that they are foolish old guys who understand nothing and never speak a word. Still the bishop insists and the captain steers the ship toward the island. The bishop then sets off in a rowboat to visit. He is met ashore by the three hermits. The bishop informs the hermits that he has heard of them and of their search for salvation. He inquires how they are seeking salvation and serving God. But the hermits say they do not know how, only that they pray simply. Three are you, three are we. Lord, have mercy on us. Subsequently, the bishop acknowledges that they have a little knowledge, but are ignorant of the true meaning of the doctrine of Trinity and Corpus Christi and how to pray. So, he proceeds to explain the doctrines of the Trinity and the Eucharist and attempts to teach them the Lord's Prayer. But the simple hermits blunder and cannot remember the words. This compels the bishop to repeat the lesson late into the night. 
After he is satisfied that they have memorized the prayer, the bishop departs from the island, leaving the hermits with the firm instruction to pray as he has taught them. The bishop then returns to the fisherman's vessel, anchored offshore, and continues his voyage. While on board, the bishop notices that their vessel is being followed. At first, he thinks a boat is behind them, but he soon realizes that the three hermits are running across the face of the water as though it were dry land. The hermits catch up to the vessel as the captain stops the boat and inform the bishop, we have forgotten your teacher, O servant of God. We have forgotten your teaching, servant of God. As long as we kept repeating it, we remembered, but when we stopped saying it for a time, a word dropped out, then another word, and now it has all gone to pieces. We can remember nothing of it. Teach us again. The bishop is humbled and replies to the hermits, your own prayer will reach the Lord, men of God. It is not for me to teach you. Pray for us sinners. After this, the hermits turn round and walk back to their island. I like that story. It's a good thing, isn't it, that we revisit annually these, they're called Theological Sundays, the readings, in honor of the Pente Pentecost, Trinity, Holy Trinity, and now the most holy body and blood of Jesus Christ. It's worthwhile to ponder yet again these sacred mysteries. Uh, and as we mature in our path, our spiritual path, sometimes we come with a richer understanding and sometimes it is very dry, but it's worth visiting these readings annually. But as the Tolstoy story of the three hermits shows, the path to spiritual appreciation is not so much through theological explanations as it is through our hearts. Like the simple sincerity of the three hermits, and makes it possible for them to walk on water. So how does this mystical world open up for us now in the 21st century? How? It is through us, you and me, finding time for regular, daily, wordless prayer to meditate, to ponder Jesus Christ and his most holy body and blood the living bread, the saving cup. Note that the prayer invented by the three hermits is mysterious. It's so simple and sincere, but it enables them to walk atop the water. Three are you, three are we, have mercy on us. Well, that's emphasizing the Trinity there, right? Three are you, Father, Son, and Spirit, Three are we, these hermits, have mercy on us. So we could almost say, if we wanted to do a repetitive prayer and privately, um, as we breathe in, in your body, breathing out Jesus, in your blood, Jesus, have mercy on me. Now a word about mercy. Often mercy is only thought to be when a person is confronting their own, uh, violating their integrity, sinning, and they're asking for forgiveness. That's a meaning, of course it is, but it is not the whole picture. When the Psalms and when we say, Lord, I need your, I, I need your mercy, we're talking about a much bigger human concern, a much bigger world, where we need the help of Christ. Facing decline due to aging, have mercy. 
trying to be patient in the family with a troublesome team, Lord have mercy. Or a strained marital period, Lord have mercy. Fears around lost income or no income, Lord have mercy on me. So, one tremendous moment during these uh, approximately 15 months of the pandemic has been an awakening within so many of us that of our Eucharistic hunger. And I have seen tears, including my own, in so many people as they received the Eucharist after many months of being able to come inside the church. The months to receive at the Parker Street door we did, and then finally now to enter inside. Such a tender spiritual joy to receive the Eucharist. The living bread, the saving cup. So let's, let's conclude, and maybe we could practice that little simple prayer, um, if you wish. Uh, it'll, just, it'll do it for about maybe 15 seconds. So as we are here, simply in the presence of God, in the presence of the faith community, the people of God, why don't we do that? Uh, the words are so simple. In your body, Jesus, in your blood, Jesus, have mercy on me. And so when I do this prayer, I breathe in, in your body, and then as I exhale, Jesus, in your blood, and I exhale, Jesus, have mercy, I inhale, exhale on me. So if you'd like to try that, uh, what some people do is they open their hands out, uh, palms up on their lap and they proceed then to repeat this slowly and peacefully as long as they can. So you want to do it? You're on. We join millions of people this very day who are saying aloud their creed, as we say. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, 
Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The risen Christ gives us his body and blood in the Eucharist feast. With gratitude and wonder, we offer up all that we are to God as we pray for our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, that it be manifest in the world as a field hospital for the sinners and the sick, bringing nourishment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian denominations around the world, that they follow Jesus into unity and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations experience political and economic unrest, that leaders shun the trappings of power and strive to serve the dignity of all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and an end to gun violence, that families experiencing grief, loss, and fear be consoled, and that the Christian community act in love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our beloved, faithfully departed, especially Mary A. Walters, Elizabeth Niera, and Angelo, Mary, and Eleanor Minetti, that they be found rejoicing in the fullness of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Ignatius Parish, that as people chosen, blessed, and called to be shared, we live as courageous disciples, offering all God has given us to feed the world's hunger around us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, you nourish us with an abundance of rich fare. Help us to become your healing presence for all those we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Well, we are now at that time when we'll ask each of you to consider your offering. Thank you for those who are faithful in sending in their envelopes and those who make online recurring gifts. We are most grateful. While we are pleased that so many join us and express their gratitude, too often that seems not to translate into financial support. Unfortunately, gratitude alone will not pay our bills. If our ministries are indeed meaningful to you, please make a gift. We cannot continue to provide our services without your financial support. And to make a donation, please click on the link in the chat box in the right of your screen, or you can scroll down to our virtual Sunday basket offering and, and click the link below. Thank you for your support. We are very grateful. As our gifts are gathered and our table is prepared, those of you at home can join together in singing Tend the Ground, which you'll find on page 7 of your order of worship.
Pray, dear followers of the Lord Jesus, that our lives and sacrifice this day will be acceptable to God, the Almighty One. Grant your church, Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we, we have presented here through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy One, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ, our Lord and Brother. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so it is we approach the table of this wonderful sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. And therefore all creatures in heaven and on earth sing out and with them we cry without end as we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once to the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, most merciful and when we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and with all the bishops and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the apostles and martyrs, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us be in union with all those millions of people saying this prayer the Lord has given us, especially children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and, grant, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the risen and ascended Lord be with you all. Let us indicate that we are at peace. Today for the distribution of Holy Communion, um, the Eucharistic ministers will be at your service uh, at, at the four places or, or more. And you may, you may come forward to receive, if you would please come forward and, and keep your masks on and, and please observe uh, social, distancing, social distancing as you persist. Dear Lord Jesus, we believe that you are fully present in the bread that is broken and blessed in the wine that is blessed and poured out in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Thank you for making us a part of you, the mystical body of Christ the Church. Renew in us your sacrificial presence and let us be united with you at this moment so that in all our thoughts, words, and actions, we may represent you and love others as you love us. Behold, behold the Lamb of God 
Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world, the living Christ among us. How blessed are we this day called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You may kneel now if you wish and we'll proceed to Holy Communion. And as we said, please feel free to come forward uh, with your mask on and uh, with your social distancing.
Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. <clears throat> well, before we go our separate ways, let me share a bit of information here for you. It's just a reminder that it's this weekend all masses at St. Ignatius will take place outdoors, indoors, sorry, indoors, and that registration is no longer required for in-person services. We do encourage people to RSVP online in order to reduce mandated health checks and waiver sign-in traffic at the door. And please note that beginning today, outdoor mass at 3.30 p.m., aside from being moved indoors, will take place at 5. So no more 3, 3.30, it'll be at 5 o'clock. So many of us have witnessed the deep sadness and concern, the rise in anti-Semitic violence, as well as violence against Muslims that has taken place around the country in the wake of yet another round of religious conflict in the Middle East. We want to remind everyone that 22% of the funds raised as part of the annual Archdiocesan Appeal is used to foster greater interreligious dialogue and other activities that bring people of faith together. If you are able to support the AAA, the AAA, we encourage you to do so on our website. Now a number of immigrants crossing the border between Mexico and the United States continues to reach historic heights. Unaccompanied minors present at moral challenge, present a moral challenge for many Catholics Tomorrow's Zoom hospitality, uh, today, Zoom hospitality hour after the 10 o'clock mass is the last of the season. We'll feature a special conversation with Mary Wozlowski, a, a mercy sister, a leader of our front lines of the migrant crisis in the Los Angeles, excuse me, in the, in the U.S. Tijuana border. You can find the link to register on our homepage. Our family and children's concert is this Thursday, June 10th, on your YouTube live channel, live stream channel. Puddington Bear will be attending with his, as his first concert. A very special treat, composer Kierke Mechem 
will be narrating a story he wrote to set to music for his daughter some 60 plus years ago. And members of the San Francisco Boys Choir Chorus will be perform performing some of their favorite songs. There will be games and prizes, so please be sure to bring the kids and tune in. We're getting to the end now, getting to the end. Uh, for parents looking to enroll their children in our Pilgrim's Faith Formation Program for kids from pre-K through eighth grade, registration is now open. You can find the link on the website. At this time, I would like to invite Heidi, yes, Heidi, please, from St. Agnes Parish forward to share information about an upcoming opportunity to learn about the practice of Jesuit spirituality. Here she is. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Heidi Callen and I'm a parishioner at St. Agnes Parish. Six years ago, I was blessed with the opportunity to go on a retreat of the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola. My retreat changed my life. I grew in friendship and companionship with Jesus. I felt as though I was being invited to hold my entire life in prayer and gentleness and felt God holding me as I held my life. The spiritual exercises were perhaps the most transformational experience of my life, and I have continued to walk in the graces that I received to this day. St. Ignatius wrote the spiritual exercises to help people deepen in their relationship with Jesus and to help them grow in the inner freedom that they need to discern where God is truly calling them. Knowing that not everyone would be able to make a 30-day silent retreat, he made an adaptation for busy people to experience the spiritual exercises in the daily life. This year, the 19th annotation, or the spiritual exercises in the daily life, are being offered starting in September and going through approximately June. Retreatants commit to daily prayer using Ignatius's contemplations and a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a spiritual director weekly. If you are being called to the experience of the spiritual exercises, I invite you to take the next couple of months to discern this call. Applications are due August 8th, and you can reach uh, Kate DeGraw, parishioner of St. Ignatius, for more information. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Okay, finally, the birthdays. All right, so we're wishing many happy returns to Stephen Gianni, Jill Lynch, Susan Todaro, William Ryan, Hope Noonan Stoner, Talitha Pendleton, and Jean White. Anybody else, please consider yourself included. Before we leave, I just wanted to say that I, I have been moved by you today by a certain quiet and uh, a real presence. It's very, it, it really has meant a great deal to me. It, it was a very prayerful mass and uh, your prayerfulness was a grace for me. Please rise. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> May mighty God bless us and keep us always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Our Eucharist is ended, let us go forth praising the Lord by our lives. Thank you. As we go forth and conclude our time together, those of you at home can join in singing O Beauty Ever Ancient, found on page 12 of your order of worship. Mm -hmm.